Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple score system in Unity. Um, so this tutorial will teach you how to make your score system, how to display the score on screen, how to gain score, and we'll show you how to do that in two ways. One from picking up items like coins and one from uh, killing enemies. And then I will also show you how to make that score persist between scenes because by default in Unity, when you have some data and you go between scenes, it goes away. Okay, so these tutorials will build on each other. Uh, what I'm gonna teach you first is how to use pickups for your score, but please don't skip ahead even if you only plan to have enemies as your score um, because I will be building on what we learn in the pickup section. So you can remove the pickup stuff later or you can not add it in, but just at least watch it so you know what we're talking about when we get to the next section. Okay, so what you need to have up until now is you're going to need to have a Unity project already ready to go. Um, you really should have your player movement already set up. And what you need, uh, you'll need some kind of asset for the pickup that you're going to be collecting. And you may, uh, for the later tutorial, you may need to have uh, some way to move between multiple levels. For example, in my screen here, you can see I have a door. And you need, uh, for the killing enemies uh, way of doing score, you will need a way to kill enemies. So first of all, let's look at adding your score. And we're going to initially make it work with pickups, make you able to uh, pick up items um, in the score. So in order to set up our basic score system, we're gonna to try to think about this in terms of conditions and actions. And in this case, our condition is that when the player touches an item, our action is that it should add to our score. And not just numerically, we also want to update the visual display of our score. We're gonna to have to keep track of those two things separately because we can't really add to a visual display. We don't have the concept of a number there, it's a display but we also wanna keep track of a number that we can add to. We can add a certain amount to it, however much our coin is worth, right? So we need to keep track of these two things separately. We have a, a numerical value that we're tracking underneath the hood and the visual display that we see. This is very similar to how we did the health system um, in a few tutorials back. So how do we do this? We're going to use two scripts, one for the score, and that's gonna be on our player, and one for the score pickup, and that will be on the coin. So let's start off by adding the score script. Um, in your Unity project, we're gonna go down to the script section, we're gonna right click, create, C Sharp script, and we're gonna call it score, okay? Once you've created your score script, you need to then open it. So you find it in your uh, project window and double click it to open it in Visual Studio. Okay, so my score script is now open. We've got our starting uh, start and update functions. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to add a um, some variables to this script, okay? So first of all, we need to keep track of our actual score. And we're gonna do that in a private variable. So we're gonna have a set of private variables. And remember, private variables are ones that aren't editable in Unity and they aren't accessible by other scripts. They're only for keeping track of things internally in our script. So we're going to have a private int score value, we'll call it that. And you can even say it starts at zero. And from there, uh, we're not going to use these start and uh, update, fu update functions. Instead, we're going to have a score, a public um, function, public function, because it's going to be accessible by another script, our um, coin. When we pick up the coin, this script will be accessed. So we need this to be a public function so that our coin can access it. And we're going to call it public. We're going to have void, which means that there's no return value. And we're going to call the function add score. And then we're going to allow the calling code to provide how much uh, to add. So this is a parameter for the function. And it means that information is going to be passed into this function. And then we can use the information. So this is information that's going to be passed into the function. And we can then use it. Okay, so how do we use that? We know how much we're going to add, we know how much we currently have. So we simply say score value equals score value plus to add. So what this is doing is it's taking how much we had already stored in our score value, which to start with is zero. Then we're adding to that how much we are being told to add to our score and we're storing it in the score value variable. So this is just going to do exactly what it says it's going to add to our score. Okay, and let's go ahead and add a note here. Um, 
update the numerical value of the score. And this is the first action that we just talked about, right? And we should make a note here, this add score function, this is not a built-in Unity function. Unity doesn't know anything about score or our script. Instead, this is a, a function that we've written, and so it will only be able to run if we call this function elsewhere in the code. So I need to say a function to add to the player's score and not automatically called by Unity. We need to call it ourselves in our code. So this is not a function that will automatically happen, right? No function just happens, right? Instead, it's called. That means it has to be told to happen. Now, for some of these, Unity does that, but this is one that we have to do ourselves. We just made it up. So Unity doesn't know anything about it. We have to use it ourselves. Now, this is all well and good, but this is an internal variable. Our player will never see this. So we want our player to see the score. So in order for the player to see the score, we need to use a text element. And to do that, we need to make a variable for it, and we need to modify it. But before we can do any of that, we have to tell Unity that we are going to be working with the user interface because the text element is part of the user interface. So if you were to go up here right now and write public text, it's gonna try to call it something different and it's not gonna work properly. And if you force it to say text, it's gonna be the wrong color. It's gonna have a red underline, stuff's not working. And that's because you, that's because Visual Studio doesn't realize that we are using the Unity UI. So we need to tell it that up at the top here, very top of your code. We don't usually go up here where it says using Unity engine, we need to do using Unity engine dot user, or just, just dot UI, it doesn't mean user interface, UI. And then if we go back down here and we say we're gonna have a public variable and we're gonna use public text and let's go ahead and call this score display. All right, this means that it's visible in Unity and we can link up a text object to our score to be the thing that we're going to display. Okay, so we can link that up and I'll show you how to do that once we go back to Unity. Right, but before we do that, let's finish our script. So now we have access to the score display. So then we're going to go down here and we'll say, update the display of the score based on the numerical value. So we've updated our numerical value. Now we need to update the score display. And to do that, we do score display dot text equals. Now we need to make this a string. So we'll do score value dot to string. Okay, now this will create a string. Now what is a string? Why, why do we need that? A string means text. And because we're displaying this as text, we can't leave it as a number. And in, in, when we just talk about values and numbers and things, we kind of use that interchangeably with you know, normal words. But computers can't do that. They need to have very different things as for, in terms of a number and other text. And because even though it's a number that we're displaying, we have to convert it into text. It almost think of it as writing out, you know, one. We're not, we're gonna use numbers in the display, but it still has to be text versions of the numbers, okay? So that's what this does. This two string will change that just numerical value into a text version of the number, okay? So we need to do that there. Once we've done that, we can save. Make sure you save your script or it won't work in Unity. And we can go back to Unity, okay? Uh, but this won't be quite enough. We need to add another script. So let's add another script. It's going to be score pickup. So right click on your scripts folder, do create C sharp script, and we're gonna call it score pickup. Remember, no spaces, and you wanna capitalize the S and the P, score pickup. And then double click that to open it. And if this asks you, you can reload the solution. Okay, so we've got score pickup now. So score pickup, we are going to be adding uh, the information for a coin. This is going to be on a coin. So let's get rid of these public, um, this, this start and this update function. We don't need those. But what we do need is a public variable. So let's put in here a public variable. And remember public variables are uh, editable in Unity. And that's the important part. So, um, and they're also uh, usable by other scripts, but we won't need that in this case. Okay, so uh, let's call it a public, we're gonna make an int for our score 
um, because the score really doesn't need to be a load it doesn't need to be you know have decimal points integers are usually fine for score let's make sure that's how we set it up over here as well yes our score value is an integer all right so int so public int and let's call it pickup value and we'll just leave it as one by default so equals one because we usually we don't want our coins to be worth zero by default we want them to be worth one by default and then we can add to that or change it for individual coins so oh pardon me our next step here is to add a uh, on trigger function. So on trigger enter 2D. Make sure you spell this exactly correctly or it won't work. This is one that is called by Unity. So it has to match the exact name that Unity is trying to call. And Unity will call this function whenever your uh, object touches another one that's marked as a trigger. You can note this here, called by Unity when this object overlaps with another object marked as a trigger, or if our object is marked as a trigger, it's fine. One of them has to be. And this is the condition, right? So our condition, this is our condition. If um, the player touches a coin, right? That's our condition. And we can put quotes in there so you can kind of see what we're talking about. So we want to know if the player has touched the coin. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and we're going to do that by, we can check the player's tag, we give our player a tag. We've done that before in one of my past tutorials where we were dealing with enemies, right? We checked if the tag was enemy and then we did something. But there's an easier way because we're going to have our score script attached to our player. So if we want to check if the thing that we bumped into is the player, Right, this is going to be this score pickups attached to our coin. If we want to make sure the thing we bumped into was the player and not an enemy, because you don't want to give score to the enemy, uh, then we would check if the score script is in fact attached to the player, to the thing we bumped into. So how do we check that? Well, we can find out if any particular script or component is attached to an object very easily. So we have other here. That's the thing that bumped into us, right? So we, in this case, are the coin. And we can check if that other thing has a particular script or component on it. So how do we do that? So we're gonna check if the score script script is attached to the thing we bumped into. All right, and we do that by using the get component function. So we're going to store the result in a score, score script. This is a variable we're making, and we're gonna store the result of other dot get component inside there. And we're gonna use our angle brackets and put the word score. That means that's the type of component we're looking for. And then our open close parentheses to indicate it's a function. So this is saying, go to the thing we bumped into. Dot means do something on that thing. So go to it, do something on it. And we're going to, that's something that we're doing is using get component to check if there is a score script attached. And then take that score script and store it in our new variable that we've just declared. That's what this line of code is doing. So then if score script is not equal to null. So what we're checking here is we're saying, you know, null means empty. So if we didn't find it, our box, our variable box there, score script, is gonna be empty. So this is saying if that variable is not empty, that means we, if we did find something, not empty means we definitely found a score. So if it's not empty, we uh, have a score script. So the thing we bumped into is the player, exclamation point. All right, so that means we are in the right place. Okay. So if that's the case, then we're going to use the score script that we just bumped into. We're going to do score script dot add score and add score. You see when I did that parenthesis there, it's come up with a pop up there and it shows me add score and it has a parenthesis and it says to add. So it means that I need to provide information. And so I need to say how much score we're going to be adding. Now you could just put a number in there, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use our variable that we declared up here, which is pickup value. Why do we want to use a variable? Because it means that our, um, in Unity, we can change that 
variable and we can get a different result. Now let's go ahead and capitalize that V. I just noticed that that's not using the right naming convention. So if you've been copying me, make sure you cap, uh, capitalize that V in both places where we've used that variable. Okay, so we are now um, add our pickup value to the player's current score. And that's the actions that we were talking about before. And we're gonna do one more thing. We don't want this coin to uh, hang around. So it wasn't listed in our actions, but we really don't want our coin to be giving a score constantly when we're touching it. We want the coin to go away when we pick it up, right? That's kind of implied in you know picking up a coin, it goes away. So we need to then uh, destroy the coin, okay? So uh, we should then delete this object so we don't infinitely add coins or add score, right? That'd be, that'd be cheating. So we do that by using the word destroy and a parenthesis because it's a function and we tell it we're gonna destroy. And we're gonna destroy, we just put in game object there, not capitalized though, game object. And that means with a lowercase g, it must be lowercase, that means that we will be destroying the game object that this score script is attached to. Okay, this specific script is attached to it. So that is our goal there. Okay, so if you save that, we now should have all of our scripts done. So let's go back into Unity now. And in Unity, we're going to do a couple things. So we need to add, first of all, a display for our score. We don't have that yet. So if we go up to components and we go down to UI and add text, oh, it's not gonna let me do that. We can do it from, um, game object, here we go, game object, UI, text. So that's gonna give me a new text component. I'm gonna double click it to find out where it is. It's in that lower left-hand corner right now. I'm gonna move it all the way up to the top right-hand corner because that's what makes sense to me. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger because it's kind of tiny right now. And I'm going to increase the text size. I'm gonna change, change the font to maybe around 30. And I'm gonna change the color to be a nice white color. It looks like the text is still a little bit small. I'm gonna change it to just say zero for now. Or you can put it at like 99. And 30 still seems way too small, so I'm gonna put it up to 70. That looks much better. If you can see in my preview on the right-hand side there, it looks a lot better. And I'm gonna put it on the right-hand side. All right, so you can place yours wherever you like. Just make sure that it's visible on the screen. Remember to make sure that your game preview, when you're positioning your UI, you want your game preview to match what you're actually going to be building it for. So I've got mine set up for a phone right now um, in portrait mode, um, and it's just a particular model of phone, but you could set yours up however you like. You can just use a aspect ratio. You can add custom ones. What you don't wanna do is have it on free aspect and then have it on some like really weird aspect ratio that doesn't actually exist, okay? And think that that's how it's actually gonna look because you may be surprised. It might look quite bad in the actual uh, finished game. Anyway, so I've now got mine uh, set up kind of how I want. I made it right aligned, I changed the size, just made it look a little bit nicer. I'm also gonna rename my text here rather than just call it being called text. I want it to be called score display just to make it really clear what that is. It's a game object name so you can use spaces here. It's absolutely fine. Okay, so now I have a display for, uh, for my U, uh, UI for the score. Now I need to have a script for my score and we're gonna put that on the player because it's gonna actually be bumping into things and it'll just be a little bit easier for us. So click on your player and go ahead and drag your score onto them or to add components. And you should now have your score display on your player. Now uh, you may notice that there is a score display and it says none text, right? That's because we have not told this score script where the display is yet. All right, so if you were to try to use this right now, you would get some errors coming in because it will say, that's not assigned, I don't know where the text is. Okay, so you need to drag the text in. And this is one way you can hook up your scripts so they talk to each other. I've showed a few different ways in these tutorials. I've showed you how to do get component and I've showed you how to do find object of type. This is another way that works really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have my player selected, then drag score display into that slot. Now, if that's difficult for you, if it's, if it's causing you problems, you can also click this little circle next to the slot and it will bring up a menu. And within that web menu, you can type in whatever you're looking for and you can find the text you're looking for. Okay, once you have your score display hooked up, we now need to set up a coin. 
So I'm going to double click on my player to bring me out of this UI and back in zoomed in on my um, game sort of world down here because um, there tend to be quite different scales. And I'm going to go and find a um, graphic to act as my uh, item pickup for our score and I'm going to choose a coin. So I'm just going to drop the coin there. There's my beautiful coin. And I'm going to give this coin a collider. That's very important. If you don't put, give your coin a collider, it won't be able to register collisions. Always in Unity, if you want to know if something is collided with something else, it needs to have a collider on it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give this coin a circle collider because my coin is a circle. Uh, so it makes the most sense. And I could actually make that, that radius a little bit smaller because it's a little bit big there. Perfect. 0.3 works for my coin. And I'm going to click is trigger. This is really important because we wrote our code. Let me open it back up. We wrote our code on trigger enter. So one of your um, collision boxes has to be a trigger or this will not work. And it makes most sense for the coin to be because your player, you don't want your player to be a trigger because your player has to be able to bump into walls. It's very important. So your coin can be a trigger. Okay, so now we have our collision on our coin. Uh, we now need to add the actual script that we wrote. So you can drag that in, score pickup onto your coin, um, or you can do add component and find it from there. And you can change how much your coin is worth. Let's go ahead and I'm going to make mine worth five. You can make yours worth whatever you like. And I'm, oh, I just realized I've left my score display showing 99. Let's go back up there and change that to zero so we don't get confused. Okay, so this should be ready to test. I'm going to go ahead and press play. I'm going to move my player up. I've touched the coin and my score has gone up. Now I notice I've got some um, errors here. This is just because of my own, um, I've deleted some scripts and I've realized I've not got rid of the references yet. You shouldn't see any errors down here, um, but you should see when you've touched the coin, you get some score up at the top. Okay. Now if that didn't work for you, double check that your player has a coll uh, collider on it, right? And I should have a, some kind of collider. I'm using a box collider on mine. You may be using something else. And as always, if you are running into problems, make sure you carefully read any error messages that, error messages that you receive. All right, you shouldn't just look at them and go, ah, an error, I don't know what to do. You know what, you know what to do, it'll tell you. So read through it very carefully, make sure you understand it as best you can. And from there, you will hopefully be able to figure out what to do and what's going wrong. Okay, so the next step is that we're going to be adding uh, the ability to get score on kill. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you don't have enemies, you don't want to get score when you kill the enemies, uh, you can skip on to the last section of this tutorial. Okay, so for this section, we will be adding uh, score when we kill an enemy. So our goal in our condition and action are just that. The condition is whenever we kill an enemy and the action is add to the player's score using our existing function. We already have an add score function. That's what we'll be using. So in order to accomplish this, uh, you should already have an enemy set up and you should have the ability to kill the enemy. So a player should have a way, a way to attack. If you don't already have that, you'll need to watch previous tutorials to get yourself to that point. Even if you're using your own custom code, we, you can still follow this tutorial, but you won't necessarily be using the exact same script no, names as me. So in my script, um, we're gonna be modifying an existing script. And for me, that's called player damage. And if you've been following from my uh, previous tutorials, yours may be called the same. Um, and we're going to find the point in that script where we kill the enemy. And we're going to be using that to, in addition to killing the enemy, going to our uh, function that we just wrote to add to the score and using it. Uh, we will also be adding a new script in order to allow different score values for different enemies. So the first thing we're going to need to do is on the scripts here, um, we're going to add that script first. We're going to add a kill score script, and this is going to be an incredibly simple script. It will literally just keep track of how much an enemy is worth to kill. It won't have any functionality on its own. All right, so let's go ahead and go up to, uh, if you right click scripts, go to create, C sharp script, and we're going to call it score kill. So it's going to go down with our score and score pickup. We've got score kill. And in here, um, I'm going to reload the solution and we don't need any of these functions. So we are only going to have a public variable and it's going to be public int. And let's see, what have I called it? Kill value. And we'll leave it at one to start with. So we'll assume that uh, an enemy is always worth at least one. And we can then add to that uh, if we 
uh, want an enemy to be more powerful or more scary. Okay, so that's all the script is going to do. Make sure this is public so that we can access that from other scripts. Remember, public means not only can we set it in Unity, which we want to do, but we also want to be able to access it from another script. So we're going to leave it as public. Now, if you're getting farther along in programming, you may realize that leaving things public isn't such a good idea. I understand that. And that's definitely true whenever you become more advanced programming. Right now, most of the people following this tutorial are beginners, so it's okay when you're starting off to leave things as public. Okay, so then once we've got our kill value there, uh, we're going to be modifying our player damage.cs. And again, if you have your own custom code, it might be called something else. But for me, with my, um, my code from our tutorials earlier, that's what it's called. It's called player damage. And this is the script that's attached to the projectiles the player shoots. So what are we going to do here? What we want is in the section where you kill the enemy. So for me, that's a function literally called kill enemy. We're going to add some stuff. So before we destroy the enemy, we're going to add some uh, new sections here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the enemy has the score kill components. Okay. And that means that that enemy should give you score. And if it doesn't have the component, it won't do anything. So this means you could have some enemies that don't give you any score. Maybe they're really small and weak. And you could have some enemies that do. Okay, so then let's go ahead and check that. We'll say, uh, just as we did before, this is going to be the same as in our uh, score pickup, how we check if that thing that we bumped into had a score on it. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to check if the enemy has the score kill on it, right? So we're gonna call this score kill script and we'll check if then enemy dot get components, angle bracket, score kill, and then our parentheses and semicolon. So this is saying our enemy, go to it, check, get, get a component on it. The component type is score kill. Store the result of that in our new variable that we've just created. So this is a new variable. So now, just as before, we're going to say if score kill script is not equal to null. So if there actually was something, if the box is not empty that we just tried to fill with the score kill uh, component, then um, this means this means uh, our enemy has a score value, right? Okay, so then we need to get the player score because we want to do player score dot add score, right? That's what we want. We want to do the same thing we did over here in pickup where we did score script dot add score. The problem is we don't have the score script. We have the kill script. We don't have the score script. What do we do? Well, all we have to do is go get it. Now, this is an expensive operation, so you should be careful not to do this too often, but it's all right for now. So let's go ahead and do this. It's going to be very similar to what we did up here, but it's going to be a different function on the right hand side. So we're going to declare a variable to keep track of our score score player score equals now instead of going to an enemy and checking if it has the score script on it because it won't the enemy can't get score we're going to use a big function called find object of type and this is going to search through everything in your scene and it's going to try to find the object that has our score script on it right so that's going to get our score script then we are going to use it so we're going to assume this succeeds um, we really should have a check here. So we can do something like if player score is not equal to null, we really should have a score in the scene, but check to make sure we have a score object. And really you might want to leave this out because what we, we kind of want to get an error if we don't have a score object, like we should know that there should be, we should not have that situation. You should have a score object in your scene. So you can leave that part out. We can just check. We just try to use it directly. And if it doesn't work, we'll have an error, but that's okay. All right. So what we want to do is we want to add the value from the score kill script, right? Because our score kill script, this guy has this kill value. So we can just do player score, add score, score kill script, oh gosh, dot kill value. Okay. So what does this mean? This means take our core skill script, core, score kill script that is attached to our enemy and check it, go to it and find out the kill value. So that's going to be whatever was set in Unity 
for that enemy as the kill value. Then we're going to take that kill value and pass it on to this function on our player's score, which is the add score function. So remember that's over here, and it's going to then take that, add to our score value, and update the text. So that's the whole long line of things that are happening there. And that will all happen before we then destroy the enemy. So this will allow us to get score from our enemy. That should be all we need. So if we save that and then go back to Unity, okay, and from here, we need to now take our enemy. So here I've got my enemy. And I'm going to add this core uh, score kill. It's hard to say that onto the enemy because we lecturers talk about core skills all the time. So it's, it's very easy to get myself backwards. All right, and now that I've added the score kill script onto the enemy, we can then add a kill value. We can change how much he's worth. So I'm gonna make him worth 10. He's more worth more than a coin. And that's all that we should need to change because my player already shoots uh, lasers that have the player damage script on them. So I shouldn't need to change anything else. All right, so I'm gonna now go up, collect my coin. You can see my points have gone up to five. And then if I turn, if I move over here and I fire, I now have 15 points because I gained 10 from killing the enemy. So overall, that has now worked properly. Okay, so now you can add uh, as much score to different enemies as you like. All right, so for our last step, uh, we will add the ability to keep your score between scenes because right now, if you were to create a new scene and try to go through, your score will reset. So I'm gonna show that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and make a duplicate of my scene. So I've got level one here. I'm gonna save my level one scene. And I'm going to then go up to file and save as, and go to my scenes, and I'm gonna call it level two. And how will I know the difference? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just change the background color. And if you're just doing this as a placeholder along with me, you can do that and then you can update your level two later. Um, but just so that you can see if it works. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go up to file, build settings, add my level two to the build settings so it's not there. And remember that you won't be able to change levels without it. And then I'm gonna go back to level one. Now I'm not gonna show in this tutorial how to add a door script because a previous tutorial that I've done already shows that. Um, but I'm gonna to go to my door that has that script on it and I can see here it says level two already. So make sure that it matches the name exactly or it won't work. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna get this coin. I'm gonna fire my laser at that guy. And I'm gonna go down to this door and go to level two and you can see that my score has reset to zero. And that's because even though it's the same script, because I just copied the scene, it's the exact same script, whenever you load a new scene, it deletes everything in the old scene, including all the data. Okay, so my health will have reset when I go to the new level and my score will also reset when I go to the new level, which is less good. You know, it's, it's probably okay if your health resets, you might wanna change that, but we definitely don't want our score to reset on each level. Like that's a bit, maybe you wanna have separate scores per level. It really depends on the game, but often you want your score to keep going between levels. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, there's a lot of ways. And if you look online how to do this, you will find like five different answers. Okay, so I will teach you one of the answers here. And it's not the best answer for experienced programmers. There's a lot of potential problems and I wouldn't recommend this. But for beginners, it's the easiest to implement. It's the easiest to get working. And I'll try to explain the philosophy behind it and why it works so that beginners can hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls that come with it. Um, but it, uh, it is a little bit advanced, so it's okay if you don't fully understand it, just do your best to follow along. So long-winded way of saying our goal right now is to get it so that this doesn't happen, that we don't have uh, our score reset. So what we want, um, our condition and action um, will actually, it, it's actually very easy to make the score persist. What we really want then, once we change that, so that's one small change, it's not really a condition and action, it's just a change of a type of data. What we really want then is to be able to reset our score when we want to. So we only want to reset our score when level one starts, right? And you could even change this to be on the title screen or game over screen or somewhere else, okay? So we're gonna reset our score when level one starts. Uh, so in order to do this, we are only gonna be modifying score.cs. It's very small, we're almost done um, with this. So let's go ahead, we're back to level one here, and I'm gonna open up score um, our script score here. Okay, so we're going to make uh, a minor change here. 
we're going to change this score value, private int score value. We're going to add a word. We're going to add the word static. Okay, so what does this do? Static is like having a shared communal box, a dead drop or something, right? So the way this works is normally if you have a variable, and this is a bit difficult because you can think of us as only having one score object at a time. Yes, at a time, but we do have multiple score objects in different scenes. And each of those score objects have their own self-contained data. It's almost like what's in their purse or their, you know, manly backpack or whatever. You have your own containers for your data and it's not shared. It belongs only to them, even though you might have another score object. So say you're two students, you don't necessarily share the contents of your backpack, right? So a static variable is a shared variable. It's a communal variable. So when one score object changes the static variable, another score object will see that same change. It's only one piece of data shared between all of the score objects, even ones in different scenes. So that's why this works. What that does do is violate some principles of coding that we tend to try to avoid violating, which is about sharing data. All right, so we want to be careful um, and see that there can be problems from this, but it's still often the easiest solution in a lot of situations. So recognize the possible issues, avoid it when you can, but game development is full of quick and dirty solutions. And especially as a beginner, this is sometimes the most easy way to implement something like score being saved between scenes. Okay, so score, score value is now static. All right, what this means is that our score value will now be saved. Now the problem we're gonna see actually won't come into play until my next tutorial when I show you how to restart uh, or go back to the beginning. Um, and what you'll see then is that your score never resets. It stays at what it was when you died and went back to the beginning. That's not what we want. We want our score to reset whenever we go back to at the beginning of the game. Um, now, if you want to add something a little bit more complex, like where you have, uh, you die in a level and your score goes back to what it was when you started the level, that's going to be more complicated than what we're going to cover here. This is just going to show you how to have a score that lasts between scenes and that you can reset back to zero if you want to. Okay. So let's go ahead and add that, um, at this point right now, we have a way to keep it the same, but let's add a way to reset it when we want to. And that's going to be a public variable. We're just going to make a Boolean. A Boolean variable is true or false. Basically like a tick box. We can say, do we want it to reset or not? So let's put that up here, public bool, and we'll call it should reset. And we'll have it be false by default. We don't want to reset. Okay. Now we need to add a new, uh, function here because we need to check whenever we first start up. Um, the other issue you'll see here is that we don't check when we start up what our current score value is. So when you go to a new scene, if you had it left like this, uh, it would look like it had zero score at first. And then once you collected an item, your score would suddenly jump back up to where it was plus that item's score. So it would still, it would be a bit weird because the only place we're updating the visual display is in the add score function. So only when your score changes, which is not what we want. We want to update now the visual display when you first load as well. So we're going to add an, uh, a, let's just go ahead and do it in the start function because we're going to be using a component on our text. And we don't want to assume that that's been loaded in a week. So we're going to use the start function. And that remember, that's just void start. And you can put a note here to remind yourself that called by unity when uh, the first frame after this object is created, right? That's what start is. So it's automatically called by unity. We don't need to call the start function. It happens automatically. And we're going to put um, in here, first of all, at the bottom, we're going to just copy. We can copy this update score display of the score based on the numerical value and that is done by just saying a score display dot text equals score value dot two string parentheses. Okay. So let's go ahead. And before that, we're going to check if we should reset the score. So if should reset equals true, and then you can put the value inside there. So we're going to say check if we should be resetting the score, um, a, this scene. And then in here we can say, uh, reset the score 
value back to zero. And we do score value equals zero. Oops, sorry, zero. Zero. All right. So we don't have to repeat this because it's down below. So either way, whether or not we reset the score or not, we're going to update our text to match the current value of the score when we first start. So that is all the changes we need to make to our score script. Make sure you save it. Then let's go back to Unity. Let's click on our player. Let's go down. And for the level one, we're going to go ahead and tick should reset. So if we then had a, a door that took us back to level one, it would reset our score. We can actually check that. If we go to level two, uh, make sure to save your level one, click on your door and change that to level one just to make yourself go back to level one. And then we go back to level one, save your level two, and we run this and I'm gonna run and collect this. I'm gonna kill this dude. I'm gonna go down to my door. And you can see my score is still 15. I can collect more things, I can kill more dudes. And if I go down, to the, go down to the door now, I'm gonna go back to level one and my score resets to zero. Right, now this wouldn't really make sense if you were making a multi-room dungeon and you wanted to be able to go back to level one, you wouldn't wanna tick that should reset. But this makes sense if you had an end game screen that came back to level one after you played. Okay, you can also add a score object to a later scene and simply um, just tick it there, even though you're not going to actually be changing the score there, uh, and tick the should reset to make the score reset at that time. Okay, well that's everything about your score system. Your score should now work. My next tutorial will show you how to add an end state to your game for winning and losing, and you can display your score on the end game uh, screen using the exact same score script that we made here. You won't even have to add any modifications. Um, so that's a really good place where you can display your score. Uh, high scores, some of you may be wanting to do, are more challenging because those are typically saved between play sessions. Static is not enough to save data between play sessions, you know, closing the app and reopening it. Instead, you will need to use something else, either your own um, input, uh, I, your file IO, which is kind of advanced for beginners, or you can use Unity's built-in uh, player preferences to save your data. If that's something you're interested, I recommend looking into player preferences to start with, or player prefs. Um, to learn how to save data between your play sessions. But that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. So hopefully you have your uh, score working properly now. If you do encounter any trouble, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I will also include uh, a link to a online uh, list of code for the code that I used in this tutorial to help you out. But I do recommend trying to type it out yourself as you'll learn a lot more than if you just copy the code from my online repository. Okay. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a lot of fun making your game. Bye.